Well, I'll make a short video on uh, what it took to get Pet G to print on my Ender 3. Uh, using the standard, okay, the, the Ender 3 that I have is stock. The only thing that I've ever upgraded on this printer was the springs. That's it. I never touch anything. <clears throat> so first I tried to uh, uh, print using PEG with the standard 0.4 nozzle. And I was successful for a while, but it was really hard to be successful. And um, things would always change. The, the t tolerances magically would change and everything. So what, because I print a lot of flat parts, square parts, and there, I don't print toys. There's not a lot of like, details in it. I decided to upgrade to a 0.6 nozzle from 0.4. And that, that right there made a huge difference. So this is PETG printing at 235 on the nozzle, 84 on the heated bed, um, 0.6 nozzle again. A um, few other things, this is not, not all of them. I had to o over extrude, so uh, what is that called? Flow or something? So instead of being 100%, I actually made that 110%. And then, um, so instead of being, you know, extruded 100%, 100%, it's 110. Another thing is that uh, the tip of the nozzle has to be much closer to the bed. If you do, if you do the paper, you know, the, the, the manual, test with the paper underneath the nozzle and it's it, it will it's not going to adhere just as good it won't be flat enough and it's going to create spaces between the tracks and, and you're going to see it this is super critical especially on the first on the first layer i'm printing this part upside down so that uh, the front facing part that you will see Prints nice and smooth, so it looks really nice. Um, so this is 20% support. I, I did at one point had 30% when I had issues. My, uh, and what would happen is the parts would be really, um, they would like cr crumble in hands. Now, I, I thought that the, my, my nozzle was plugged up. I put a new nozzle in and, and the same exact thing happened. So then, I abandoned the 0.4 nozzle, went straight to 0.6. With all the other tweaks I told you about, it was really finicky, but I, I got it to print as you guys can see. Um, starting to wonder if it's even worth printing Petchy at all, because the parts, uh, this is a speaker baffle, so it's just holding on a driver. The only reason why we switched from uh, PLA to PETG is because, so these are the corner uh, screw holes for the four corners where it bolts into the speaker. And I always, when I was always bolting with PLA, I would hear a little crunch, you know, when you uh, tighten it, tighten the bolt, not necessarily over tighten, but just, you know, your, your average tightening. But I never, I would never hear that crunch with PETG. And I do print these for customers. Now I don't make a lot of money, it's just a hobby of mine who want, want to upgrade their uh, baffle on some of the speakers. This vintage pair of speakers, I'm not gonna really say what it is because this video is not about selling anything. This is about showing you guys how I uh, semi-successfully <coughs> got it to print out of stock. Now, we all know, know that these tubes will start to melt at over, I don't know what they're rated for, 250 maybe. I would, I, I, I started getting the, the tube plugged up around 245 when I tried, tried to go any higher than that, they would eventually plug up. And I was thinking that the nozzle was plugged, but when I took the tube out of here, I could see that it, it melted up into the, 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 the filament melted with the tube. 
So no matter how hard this extruder was trying to push the film in, it was, it was never getting past the middle there to even get to the nozzle. So it gives you like a false sense of thinking that nozzles plugged where actually this thing melts. I believe there's some Capricorn tubes, which I actually ordered. They're rated up to 300 C, so you can easily go to 240, 250, 260, even 280. I'm not sure what material would go to 280. I don't have any. I don't think, you know, I, I don't know what this printer is rated for, but yeah, I, uh, I recently picked up another printer in the used market. There's just this any cubic Viper. So I ordered a new replacement, this hot end. This was, was kind of messy. These are cheap. They're like $10, so whatever. I ordered a new replacement, I'm waiting for it. And I'm going on this guy, I'm going to replace the Capricorn tube as well, <coughs> in case I, this is the stock tube. I want to experiment printing PETG. Uh, I tried to replicate what I was successful on Ender 3, uh, my older Ender 3, and I was not, not successful at all. This, this plugged up really quickly, but um, using the stock 0.4 nozzle as well. Anyway, I ordered, uh, I think I'll just dedicate this printer to uh, printing in PLA plus for now. When I tested PLA, it printed really nice on this guy, really nice. I picked this up in the used market for a hundred bucks. And uh, you know, like I said, a new hot end with the tip and everything and, and even tubing, I think comes with it was like $12. And then I got, I got uh, one meter of the, I ordered red Capricorn tubing. I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, beyond that, it works really well. I like this printer because there's a lot of advancements over the ender. It has uh, this plate, this magnetic plate is awesome. It has two motors on the, on the Z axis, left and right. They're be behind this thing. It has, uh, it will auto level. A, this is the sensor and when it presses in, it lifts the sensor. It's a little bit different than the other sensors, like the BL Touch, but uh, I kind of like this guy. The the light on this guy stopped working. That kind of sucks. I don't know. I don't know why it stopped working. Everything else works. Um, the there's a filament um, sensor that came with this. It was mounted in here, kind of like this. Well, it was it was give me a filament error it wouldn't print at all so i bought i re removed this as you guys can see i removed this filament sensor i'm not really sure if it's broken or not compatible with this unit i took it apart and see if i'm wrong with it so i put it back together and um and then i watched the video how how to send a, a program instruction to the eprom to bypass the the filament sensor, not just this sensor, but any sensor, even the one that comes with it, because it's kind of pain in the ass for now just to get it working. And basically I flipped the flag from a one, which is a yes to zero. I can, I can always put it back in the future once I figure this out. But um, I, I did print a Benchy before I tried PETG and I had all these issues and it worked really well. But it just goes to show you, even though this is a nicer printer, higher temperature ranges on both the bed and the and the printing hot end as yeah, so all all these extra advancements including slightly bigger printing bed it just goes to show you that ender and three this thing i don't know how old this thing is like five years old stock you know everything manual you can compare this like a stick shift and this is more of a manual the stick shift can can do some good things if once you learn it all you know and spend some time messing with it uh, i wish this had auto bed 11 because it would save me a good amount of time but even with that like i said i had to tweak it i had to get the nozzle a little bit closer to the to this for for, for the pet g to work um as you guys can see, I'm printing a bigger part. So far, I don't see corner. 
corner is not rising in any way, any bad way. So we'll see. This thing is about halfway finished. But um, yeah, this this uh, true and time tested, you know, this is not top of the line range or anything, but it's the Zenith 3 is a is a pretty good machine for what it is and when it came out. Um, I know that I can get a bamboo, whatever, spend a thousand bucks, but you know, I don't want to spend a thousand bucks. I got this for a hundred bucks and I, uh, you know, I just kind of hack it, see what, what I can do with it. But the reason why I got this printer, is I want to get one printer dedicated PETG, you know, tuned for that. So it's not to be messed with. And then the other one I can print it like PLA plus. Anyway, I just want to show you guys that it is possible to print PETG. Everything you, you hear about PETG is true. It's a much more difficult, much more difficult uh, material to print with. It, it can be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, there's, all, there's so many parameters and, and you, you might think, oh, it's this one and, and, and oh, maybe it's this one. And you go through the whole list of them and it's, and it's something completely different. To be successful, you really have to observe really well and try different things. And the most important thing I would tell you is that once you find something, write it down. <laughs> write it down so you don't forget. Because at one point I had this working fine. I kind of totally forgot about it because the printer was working magically. And then something happened. I don't know if my sl slicer software reset. Something happened and and it wasn't fine at all. It took me a while to get it to a point of how it used to be. Anyway, I strongly recommend the, the 0.6, uh, the slightly bigger tip. If you're printing parts where there's not a lot of details, it, like if you're printing toys and whatnot, you probably, probably don't want to go this route. But if you're printing functional parts like I am, highly recommend going to a bigger nozzle. It's easier to, you know, the opening is bigger. It's easier to force that plastic through it. It's just easier to get get that mass out on a printing bed. Okay, so that's about that. About it. You guys can see I'm not lying. Here's the here's what's printing at. Stock under three. It's printing. Peggy from Sun. Get some lures or whatever. eBay 20 bucks. Well, cheers. <laughs>